Hello everyone, my name is Shion Hosoda. I'm a graduate student from Waseda University in Japan. It's a great pleasure to be given this opportunity to present today. I like to talk about time varying microbiome interactions. Here's the abstract. Microbiome interaction estimation is an important research topic. Conventional methods for estimating microbiome interactions cannot be used to estimate time varying microbiome interaction. In this study, we developed unsupervised learning based microbiome interaction inference method using Bayesian estimation named UMIBATO, a method for estimating time varying microbiome interactions. This is today's outline. The first section is background. What's microbiome interaction estimation? Microbiome interactions play an important role. For example, this figure shows estimated microbiome interaction networks in the human gut microbiome. The left one is of controls and the right one is of cases. We can see that they have several different edges in cases and controls. There are two types of methods for estimating microbiome interactions from microbiome abundances obtained from metagenomic analysis. The first one is the correlation-based methods. And the second one is the generalized logical Volterra equation. GLVE-based methods. We focused on the second one. The GLVE-based method enables estimating directed microbiome interaction networks. This figure shows a directed microbiome interaction network. We can see some relationships between microbes. Symbiosis is a relationship in which microbes contribute to each other's increase. Competition is a relationship in which microbes contribute to each other's decrease. Parasitism is a relationship between A and B where A contributes to B's increase and B contributes to S decrease. These relationships are useful for revealing microbiota and the GLVE-based method have been widely used. I'll explain the details of this method later. However, conventional GLVE-based method cannot estimate time-varying microbiome interactions. This illustration shows estimation of conventional GLVE-based methods. In this illustration, the axis indicates time, and each square indicates estimated microbiome interaction network at each time point. Each circle in the square indicates microbe. Like this illustration, GLVE assumes constant microbiome interaction throughout all time points. Depending on the conditions of the environment, microbiome interactions can change. For example, it is reported that microbiome interactions differ in environments that contain different nutrients. Therefore, the inability to estimate time varying microbiome interactions is a critical limitation. The aim of this study is to estimate time varying microbiome interactions. The second section is methods. This is the schematic illustration of UMIBATO, which is proposed in this study. In UMIBATO algorithm, we use quantitative microbiota profiles, QMPs, and time point information, which indicates when each profile was obtained. UMIBATO has two steps. The first step is the growth, growth rate estimation using Gaussian process regression, CPR. We estimate gradients of logarithmic quantitative abundances. The second step is the interaction estimation using continuous time regression hidden Markov model, CTL-HMM, which is proposed in this study. 
Here, we can estimate time-varying microbial interactions. We will describe the details of UMI battle in this section. What's the GLVE-based method? The GLVE is this equation. Here, xit is the ith microbe's quantitative abundance. Phi ij is an interaction parameter from the jth microbe to the ith microbe. This equation represents that the time derivative of xit is affected by other microbes' abundances. It can be rewritten as follows. Here, we use the definition of growth rate yit. yit equals to time derivative of xit divided by xit. Typically, yit is estimated by interpolation methods, Gaussian process, and spline, and the phi i's are estimated by linear regression, where x and y are given. We will replace phi with phi t, which uh, depending on time t. We use the summation of zkt phi k as phi t. Here, zt indicates discrete states of interactions. Then, we obtain this formula. To construct a statistical model, we replaced functions of time t with variables. Then, we obtain this model. Here, we used vector inner products form, including bias term. And the epsilon is an error term. In this model, the state determines which interaction parameters to use. We have introduced time-varying parameters into GLVE. Based on the statistical model, we propose the Bayesian model whose generative process is like this. These are the prior distributions of interaction parameters. And Pt is a transition probability matrix depending time t, and it's computed from matrix exponentials of a product of a transition rate matrix q and time t. Interaction states z are generated from continuous time Markov chain for each subject, and growth rates y are generated from normal distributions based on the GLVE. This is the CTOHMM. The parameters of CTOHMM can be estimated with a variational inference. The third section has results. We conducted synthetic dataset experiments. Umibato was used in the two cases. The first case is the true model case. In this case, we use the true number of states. The second case is the practical case. In this case, we use the state deletion. To explain it briefly, it's the method to determine the number of states during the estimation. This figure shows the mean of the Pearson correlation coefficients between the true and estimated parameters. The x-axis indicates a synthetic dataset. The y-axis indicates the mean of the Pearson correlation coefficient of GLVE parameters of all observation points for the datasets. The six birds indicate umibato in the true model case, umibato in the practical case, and four conventional methods in order from left to right. Higher birds mean higher performances. In this set 1, which is generated from conventional GLVE, uh, umibato and the conventional method have similar performances. On the other hand, in this set 2 and 3, which consider multi-state, umibato outperform the conventional methods. We also conducted a real data experiment. 
we used a mouse gut microbiota dataset. This is 16S amplicon dataset using strain specific qPCR primers. A simple explanation about this dataset would go something like this. Seven mice were ingested bacteria orally, and uh, five of them were fed high-fiber diets for five weeks. Then, the diets were changed to low-fiber diets for two weeks, and changed back for two weeks. Two mice were only fed high-fiber diet for five weeks as control. This figure shows the estimated interaction states. The x-axis indicates when each profile was obtained, and the y-axis indicates state and when they were fed low-fiber diets. Subject 4 and 7 are control subject. We can see that state 5 was estimated near the low fiber diet, diet day. In addition, state 5 wasn't estimated in control subjects. State 3 and 4 emerged other than the low fiber diet dates, that is, high fiber diet dates. State 1 and 2 were estimated near the start date. We can compute transition probability matrices corresponding to given time. This figure shows the estimated transition probability matrices for a day and a week on the left and the right, respectively. The x-axis indicates a destination state, and the y-axis indicates a source state. For example, the probability of transition from state 1 to state 3 for a day is 30%. We can see that all states are likely to last for a day, but states 1 and 2 are not likely to last for a week. Therefore, states 3, 4, and 5 may be main interaction states. This figure shows the estimated microbiome interaction networks corresponding to states. Each circle indicates a microbe. Each red arrow indicates a positive interaction. Each blue T-shaped edge indicates a negative interaction. Several parasitism relationships were observed. For example, in the state 5, we can see four parasitism relationships. To summarize our results so far, we made a schematic illustration of relationships between diets and states. When a mouse were for the high fiber diet, state 3 and 4 transition to each other. Changing the diet to low fiber makes states transition to state 5. Returning the diet to high fiber makes states transition to state 3 and 4. We simulated state trajectories and microbial abundances stochastically to assess the effect of long-term low-fiber diet. This figure shows simulated interaction states and microbial abundances. The x-axis indicates elapsed days in this simulation, and the y-axis indicates simulated states and abundances. For the first 20 days, interaction states were fixed to state 5 as a state of low fiber diet. We can see that some microbes were eliminated, for example, strain 6 and strain 9. Therefore, long term low fiber diet may lead to irreversible decrease in diversity of microbiota. Here are the conclusions. 
In this study, we proposed UMI battle and estimated time varying microbiome interactions. As a result, UMI battle could capture dietary changes, and UMI battle estimated two main states when mice were fed high fiber diets. There are some future works. The first one is the model selection, that is, determine the number of states. The second one is extending the model. For example, we can consider the error of QMPs by extending the CTRHMM. Thank you for listening.